Hello, good morning. Thank you everyone for getting up so early. Um, I'm happy to see so many people. It's not full yet, but uh, I, I will talk a little so that people could come. Uh, so why I'm here on stage today? Uh, well, I missed the first Drupalcon in uh, France uh, since my first Drupalcon was uh, in London in 2011, uh, and it was an unforgettable experience. I met lots of uh, inspiring people uh, and I'm very happy to, to see, or not really today because uh, there's too much light, but uh, I've seen yesterday lots of people that, are, that were at the, the DrupalCon London and it's very nice to, to see them still now uh, today. So at that time um, I was already working for Smile for four years and it was a small agency when I arrived, less than 200 people. And I joined them because I wanted to, to work in the open source software uh, community. And uh, so they were doing that already. Uh, it was exactly what I was looking for. As I said, my first DrupalCon was in 2011. And uh, I was sent there um, as a kind of scout to, to see if there was uh, good opportunities to do more Drupal at Smile. And I came back full of energy and worked uh, since then to increase, years after years, our uh, skills in Drupal. And um, today we have more than 200 people working with Drupal. And uh, Smile is 10 times bigger than when I arrived. Uh, so when I heard that DrupalCon was coming back to France, I was very happy because I know that Smile will be part of this adventure as a sponsor and uh, will allow new people, like I, like I did in, in London, to have their first DrupalCon. And I hope for the newcomers that it's a wonderful experience. Uh, you are with lots of uh, inspiring and caring people, so don't hesitate to talk with them and make friends. Uh, you are in the, room, in the very good place. Uh, and now, um, this is the time for the keynote with Jägermeister and KitKat. Uh, I have not seen the keynote, but uh, I've read the program and we will be talking about uh, Drupal uh, using, used to build uh, um, consistency at scale. And I think that consistency at scale is the way that we are doing Drupal uh, at Smile, so don't hesitate to, to come and see us. And now, please welcome Andrea for Jägermeister and uh, make a warm welcome. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, usually I sing in front of so many people, usually, but this is massive for me. Unfortunately, there's not a personal song about Rupal. Uh, it makes more easier uh, for me to start, but maybe I should have had a Jägermeister shot already <laughs> to make it more easier for me. 
but just kidding. Um, my name is Andrea, and uh, I'm responsible for international corporate communication at Jägermeister. And Jägermeister, I think many of you know this herbal liquor with more or less good experience <laughs> before going to sleep, <laughs> maybe. But uh, why I'm here, I think in the next 20 minutes, I will talk about uh, why Drupal is our game changer or was a game changer in our um, corporate communication. But first of all, I will show you some small facts about our company, just to understand how we have these challenges. Um, this is Jägermeister. Jägermeister, we have um, sold this in more than 150 markets. It was founded in 1878. Um, this is 80 years more um, yeah, since the Jägermeister market uh, launch. There are 56 natural herbs, blossoms, and fruits. And of course, there are 35% alcohol volume. These were the sales numbers from last year. It was the best year ever we had. Um, and uh, yes, this is a very interesting figure. 134 two CL shots per second worldwide is <laughs> to achieve these uh, figures. And yes, and it's a family-owned business, uh, not a, a concern. Yes, and uh, just to have a look um, at the structure, just to see what the challenge was uh, for global internal communication with all the subsidiaries and service companies. Because we have all these subsidiaries in Germany, in the US, in UK, and in Czech Republic and Slovakia. And we have also service companies in, um, all over the world, Hong Kong, Johannesburg, Shanghai, Mexico, New Delhi, and Novoso. And we have also partnerships in northern um, Germany with Jin, and also in the US, I think you all know him, um, Drain the Rock Johnson. Um, there is a, um, he is a founder from Terramana Tequila. We are also the exclusive distribution partner. And there are some, some, some uh, challenges, and we started to have uh, the cultural change because we want to be a kind of a multi-brand business. With, um, we uh, developed a brand-led culture with our purpose, best nights of your life. We're doing all this um, to develop a strong brand internationally, to work closely, quickly, internationally, agile across national borders. This was very, very, very important for us. And we want to break down um, the knowledge silos with one voice communication, um, but with a possibility to react and to comment in our social intranet. And at the same time, it is important to continue to drive innovation in order to be able to competitive internationally. And so we want to build up power brands, you see. We want to have cooperation and fun. And yes, we need um, speed because our competitors never sleep. And yes, it is important to have innovation. And so it was very important, together with all these implement, uh, employees, to close this gap um, worldwide um, to identify the gaps in our company. And so this is just a very structural, strategic topic, chart and slide. I will go through it very quickly. Um, we have four strategic objectives and brand-led culture to implement. The question was how to act and how we bring all this information to life. And of course, we had a so-called intranet, but in terms of one-way communication, no participation, no collaboration, and the new social intranet um, would help us. And of course, in order to have an intranet, this is responsive to all these needs we have and requirements to have the higher level of participation. All the necessary um, areas must be in place. You see the need, the communication, and of course, the global IT, and yes, the cultural change we have. And so we, are gener we, um, we have a user-generated approach was to create personas with different technical um, requirements. We have maybe personas in the administration, sales, manufacturing, business sales in our subsidiaries. And yes, we made online surveys just to find out all the different needs they have. 
And yes, of course, we create different um, target groups and to find the right features for them and to find the right formats for them and, of course, the right architecture and the site types we have. And yes, of course, we have uh, some key learnings from these sessions. And of course, it was the accessibility, there's transparency, it's one of the rich goals or the big goals in our company worldwide, because we are more than 10, um, more than 1,000 um, 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 people there who work, customization, and of course, participation and engagement. And so we uh, decided to have a social intranet, and of course, our social intranet, of course, has a name, Jägernet. <laughs> Um, because um, the name should be already the reference um, to the brand. This was very important to us. And yes, of course, and we say uh, from the different uh, per personas and the different demands on social intranet, um, the following criteria had to be met. It was uh, necessary to host it in Germany. The single sign-on about uh, with um, Azure and Okta. Of course, we have experts profiling, we, have, we want to have a social Q&A for participation um, and we want to have a networking and collaboration. We want to have a chat. There were mobile access to we need, auto-translate, because we are so many different people all over the world. Of course, our focus now is German and English, but we are thinking about Czech and Slo Slovakia and our Chinese um, colleagues all over the world. And maybe we are thinking about auto-translate and, of course, push notifications. And last but not least, uh, the editorial designable homepage. Yes, and how we did it, I think, state of the art. And we have uh, a big research, we made a big research about all these needs we have. Yes, and there was... Um, yeah, but there was many providers, and after this intensive um, research, um, we came across Drupal, which was able um, to offer us all these individual and, um, yeah, the freedom, we say, and we checked all these ad aspects, um, hosting, mobile access, single sign-on, and so on, and I think this was a perfect match for us to use um, Drupal and not um, other systems, they are also um, offered on the market. And um, yes, how it sees, in 2017, um, we introduced a new intranet and created access for all colleagues worldwide uh, with a one voice strategy. This was our plan on desktop, mobile, and on smartphones, on tablets, and also for our colleagues in the manufacturing parts. Um, and all employees um, have the chance to um, identify with, um, with Azure. Employees with no email access maybe in the manufacturing part still have access to an extra bonus um, email address. And yes, so they have access with, your, with their own um, devices. An intranet in the internet accessible from everywhere. This was our goal uh, with the Jägernet. Yes, and um, last year and this year we have uh, we had a little fresh up in our Jägernet. So you see on the left side, this is a German version and this is the international version. Um, it is so it's more clean, it's clearer, it's more we have more features and um, more adapted to the needs, also the brand visual identity we have. Um, the content between German and the international version is um, individual to the subsidiaries and headquarters in Germany. Also, the content is planned and created individual. Um, we have international editor teams. We create landing topic pages without the need of programming skills. It's very easy to create landing pages. Um, it's an easy backend system, and we can focus on our backend features maybe, and the agency um, could take care of further developments. And this, this is a, a good way um, to work with Drupal. 
And also we have these, um, these mobile access, and you see all the things on desktop all over the world from everywhere you want to go to our intranet. And of course, as I said, uh, all articles and all readable videos we create um, are on info screens also in our manufacturing areas um, because they haven't the time to go through um, to their laptops or desktop um, laptops and uh, smartphones to go to the internet and have time to go through all this information we share there. Yes, and um, of course, what did we do? We have subscribed topics and a personal, personalized front page. And of course, we can do comments. Um, and of course, we have subscribed topics, notification, customized emojis, as you see. Um, we have these year shots, and we have this bottle and say, yeah, nice. We have a barrel to say, yeah, or to say, say what? or um, just a broken bottle for something like happened, oh no. And of course, um, we have some f um, features like hold and drag functions or content from social media and um, the World Wide Web. We are planning to do this automatically at the moment. Yes, and of course, we have some goals for uh, next year. And of course, we want implementation this um, chat with uh, Slack because we don't know uh, we don't work with a Microsoft uh, platform. Uh, we work with um, with Slack as a um, as a platform with a platform, and we want to implement this in our social intranet. And of course, we want to have uh, some spontaneous surveys on the front page, maybe just to to log in at the morning, and you say, "Hey, how are you?" Um, How's the weather today? How are you feeling today? Um, just to find out the mood from our um, colleagues there. And of course, we are thinking about implementation of um, artificial in intelligence. Um, maybe to have summaries in our intranet when you're still there or when you aren't there. After your holidays, you come back and you want to say, hey, what's happened about the last 40 days maybe? And you get a summary of all this information last 14 years. Uh, 40 months. Um, and of course, we want to have implementation virtual tours. It's more easier in onboarding. That are some facts about our goals in, um, yes, uh, at Jägermeister. And of course, that's where some insights from our company and our social intranet and the challenge we had with the internal communications. If you have any questions, feel free. I'm on LinkedIn. It's not a problem um, to connect and have uh, to answer your questions. And of course, I'm going to say, prost. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but normally, <laughs> normally, I would say, have a break, have a Jägermeister. <laughs> but now I hand over to Arush. Thank you. All right. You don't have a KitKat under your seat, I checked. But feel free to buy one later. Let's get into this fun story about KitKat. I'm sure you all know this brand, but just in case you don't, right? Let's go with the big picture. It's a delicious product. Buy it. Um, we're a chocolate brand that's been here since 1935, started in the UK. We can be found in almost every part of the world now. And we've been growing massively, right? It's, it's just a brand, it's a powerhouse, perfect mix of wafer and chocolate, you can't beat it. Unfortunately, while the business was doing well, we sort of forgot something, and that's the website. Now, I'll let you try and guess what year this is from. When I first saw it, I thought 1990. It's actually 2020. Ooh, right? That's, that's the sound, right? Ooh, there's actually a Google Plus logo in the corner, right? That's how much we neglected the brand online. Um, so yes, we kept Google Plus way past its due date. Uh, it was embarrassing. And so when I joined the role uh, about two years ago, the first thing I thought was, well, let, let's, let's change this, right? We need, we need to bring this brand into the digital world as much as it's in the offline world. Uh, and that's where the journey started. So 
The first thing we did was take a look, and we were actually total a global mess. We had everything everywhere. Uh, different look and feel. The brand was not consistent in any way. Uh, as you can see, a lot of different technology to get this going. So there was no scale. There was no way to learn from each other. Essentially, the definition of a mess is that. Uh, and we, this was the challenge, right? How do you bring this together? Of course, KitKat being part of Nestle is a massive organization, but that also adds its layers of complexity. So the brief is clear. We need to upgrade the brand. And we need, to, we, we need to bring some simplicity and get some scale. Essentially, it's a perfect trifecta. We want it all. And so that, that was a challenge, right? We wanted it all. So what we, we worked with Wonderman Thompson, which is our global agency. They've just had a rebrand. Now they're called VML. So anyways, this changes all the time. To create a platform that had scalability, flexibility, because KitKat, while it is a global brand, it changes region by region, right? In some places, it's a four finger. Some places it's a two finger, a chunky, different flavors, different variants. We all know about the Japanese Kit Kats, right? Matcha and such. So we needed scale, we needed efficiency, we needed flexibility. And essentially, my favorite visual of the day make all those four fingers, well, make all those fingers get into order. So, how did we do this and where did we go? First things first, we told the story, right? No better way than having Steve Ballmer tell it for, for me, but KitKat Global, right? We were like, let's get the scale, let's get the scale, let's get the scale. Um, markets were clapping. This is not how it happened, but this is how I like to imagine that it happened when I told them. Um, so we went with open source, right? We went with Drupal. And the question is, why? I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you also already know the answer. But I'll go into at least the four points that we saw that I think would really help get this into play. Step one. Let's be honest, there's no such thing as unlimited money. Uh, so we needed to maximize the budget. We needed to make sure that we were spending the right amount of money for the right level of experience to get it to, so that the consumer had essentially the right KitKat break. So this was step one. And step two was we wanted to work somewhere where there was a community. Um, you know, there's somewhere, it's something that really helps us not to work just insular, is to have something a little bit more open, talking essentially to the real world. Going there, flexibility and transparency. I think, um, again, when, when you have something that's open, it, it keeps you honest, it keeps you going. So this is something that really helped us. And fundamentally, and there are experts in the room, I will not point in any specific direction, but it is a global standard for us. This is huge. It took a while, it took a while, but it is a global standard for Nestle, and this really helps make it easy to explain to everybody at all levels whether they're extremely senior business people all the way down to the teams that have to work and actually deploy these solutions, that when it's a solution that a company can adopt, it just makes that journey easier. So with these four magic bullet points on one slide, got everybody convinced. And we started down this journey. So our journey took a little bit of time. It took a little, about 18 months, well, less than 18 months. Uh, and and it's, just, it's, it's been accelerating time and time again. This chart is actually a little bit old. I could have put a few more markets there. So prior to 2020, global mess. We had no consistency. And then we started. We started with this master template approach that we have built on Drupal. And uh, we went to each and every one of our markets and said, all right, you need to get off the old train, get onto the new train. And one by one, we went market after market after market, adapting it making sure it worked in Arabic, making sure it worked in French, in any other language that we needed, customizing, customizing the pages to show the right products. And you, I mean, you can see the consistency we were able to bring. For us, this is huge, again, as a global brand, to show up where the consumer is in the right way and, and just keep going and going and going. So today we have over 20. We're going to continue this journey over the next years, of course, this is the KitKat story, but the Nescafe story is similar. A lot of our global billionaire brands are in the same position, right? So really, the scale and the efficiency that we could get going. If there's one word you remember, right? I'm sure it's that. And it helped the business, and that's the important part. It wasn't just a technical exercise. It wasn't just as just do this because it's a compliance issue or it's because we need to do this because such is the way. It was really about step changing the way we work in digital. Because the only reason Google Plus survived until 2020 on a KitKat Global website was because 
we hadn't fixed these three things that you can see on the chart above you. So start by breaking those silos. When you have one platform across the world, people start to talk to each other. It just makes it that much easier. Um, secondly, when you show that you can be efficient with budget and that you can actually put into the right things and things that the consumer cares about and less about the back end, it really brings bolder thinking. And finally, I mean, the, the results were very simple. We had more traffic. We had less bounce rates. We actually had more page views. We were able to tell stories that we couldn't say before. And that's, for me, that's the most critical part. Clearly, you can see I'm on, more on the marketing side. But telling the stories to the consumers, that mattered. So that was stage one, get everybody onto the platform. So what, what, does, the, what does the future look like? Um, it's a lot. We can now finally do a lot of things that, does anyone work for Oreo? No? Please? Please no. But they've been able to do this for a long time at Mondelez, and now finally we can catch up, which is, you know, global promotion strategies. Have these promos that you see in store. I mean, some, some of our markets, you would buy a KitKat, it says you can win something, and you would go to Facebook. I mean, a horrible, horrible user journey. Now we can do it through us. We can do it globally at scale. Uh, of course, compliance. Our websites are safe. They, they just work. Um, we have GDPR built in from the get-go. These kinds of things matter. A lot more recipes, a lot more, because in the world of confectionery, chocolate is delicious, and sometimes you want to do something cool with your chocolate. If you haven't made a little, like a little cabin out of Kit Kats, you have to try. It's a lot of fun. Um, we can do big global launches at scale. So I can't show you something that's coming up towards the end of the year, but we will have our first connected pack at scale, 50 million packs uh, being printed and having QR codes to drive and tell stories that we just couldn't do before without having this kind of platform in place. Um, of course, data. Everybody loves data. We all want to be able to know what's happening and a tailored user experience, right? Just making sure that each market can tell the story that they want to tell. And, and the beauty is, and I'm coming up to the end, but the beauty of all this is once you've cracked it, you can just keep on going. You can just keep on scaling it. So we will be able to launch this kind of master approach, building on the KitKat framework. Because maybe I should have introduced myself, but yes, my name is Arush, and I work for chocolate, if you hadn't guessed by now. KitKat's the baby, but there's more. Um, and so After8 is a brand that I'm sure some of you know, especially if you live in the UK. It's a brand that will be able to take on this master approach that KitKat has been able to develop. We have um, the Cocoa Plan, the Nestle Cocoa Plan. This is one of the longest uh, sustainability initiatives in the world of Cocoa, which is with the Rainforest Alliance. And that, again, is a story we need to tell, we need to explain. It's complicated, but we are going to use the same global master built on Drupal to be able to tell this story at scale. And then the beauty of my job is I get free chocolate and ice cream in the office. So I also work with the ice cream colleagues, and we're, gonna, we're bringing them up into the world of, uh, of efficient scale as well. And you know, I, I, I realize I haven't shown you a lot of KitKat pictures, but I will show you what this looks like for us. So over here, you can see on the left, right, this is what our KitKat master fully reskinned to work for Nessa Cocoa Plan. This will be coming out and launching, hopefully, if timelines work this month, um, as well as for my ice cream colleagues and reskinning, relaunching, all built on the same platform, right? So we have total total efficiency. And the beauty for, the, for my clients, which are the markets, is that they see this as something easy. They have less headaches. They can focus much more on the fun stuff, which is how do I make my stories cool? How do I bring my brands to life? Rather than on all the intri intricacies that uh, they need to manage in the weeds, essentially. So we take that above market for them. And we're a complicated machine, but this is, this is how it works for us. So, that's, about, that's sort of the story, right, is we were able to get on this journey in less than two years beyond just one brand but into multiple brands and get, thanks to Drupal and thanks to Scale and thanks to some very, very smart colleagues that I work with, um, a beautiful, beautiful new KitKat identity, Cocoa Plant identity, ice cream, and so on. So with that, I invite you, no, don't have a break. But have a break, have a KitKat later. This is very, very important for me. Um, and otherwise, I think we're on track for a little bit of a Q&A, which is the most fun part, so you guys can ask us questions.
the back. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have, I, I don't know if I should try this. <laughs> Is this just, just to get us warmed up? Perfect, thank you so much. Um, you said that you didn't bring any Kit Kat. But the question is, did Andrea bring some Jägermeister? Of course. Aha, uh -huh. okay, now we need light here <laughs> in the audience. Because I think there are some hidden uh, boxes. Not many, there are five of them. And now it is your job to find them. Check out under your seat or <laughs> under your somewhere. If you find one, then bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? There are five of them, they're all here somewhere. I don't think they're in the back. Anyone? Yeah, we have one yeah. too. Yay. <laughs> so there, this is for your friends that are around you. There are five of them, we also have one here. So Andrea, how do you open it? It's very easy, just to put this uh, strip away and then you have to... So it's an automat. It's an automat, yes. <laughs> Enjoy it in the morning. Responsible, please. <laughs> so those are the morning portions, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so give, it a, give all your friends and colleagues around you and uh, let it maybe pass and up there, right? Uh, we also have a live Q&A here on your Events Air app. So please go in there. We already have a lot of questions. Yeah. So if you go into the track itself, the, the, the talk itself, there is the Q&A, and you can put in questions. So maybe we can start with uh, one. Is, uh, you talked about your title, Arush. Uh, what do you say? What's your title? I, I skipped the title, actually. I should have started with the title. So I'm a, what am I? Global Digital Lead, Global Confectionery Digital Lead, which okay. sounds very fancy. And uh, so you said that you are, uh, there was a question if there is, uh, you know, in the office, like, do you have unlimited, uh, Chocolate and ice cream? Well, it's, it's been putting on the weight. No, it's not unlimited, but we have a lot of chocolate, a lot of ice cream. You need to taste your product, even if you work on the web. I mean, let's be honest. Do you have free Jägermeister? Yes, one bottle a month. A month. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> yes. Which maybe can bring it to uh, Andrea. Your uh, Jägermeister is located in Germany. Yes. And the street, I heard that the street is called Jägermeister Street. Yes, of course. We have the known part of a street in the little town in the middle of Germany, <laughs> the Jägermeister Street, yes. So one of the questions that came up um, was uh, when COVID happened, and now we know, like, I think people continued eating Kit Kat, but people stopped partying. Of course. Um, and I assume that that affected uh, Jägermeister in these times. How did open source projects like uh, Drupal, where you had the flexibility to to do whatever. How did that help in times like COVID? Um, it was, was very important for our internal global communication because from up to Friday to Monday, uh, we had to um, create some special landing pages. We need features like breaking news, like features uh, like uh, where we put all information uh, together for our uh, staff, um, how to work, how to find all information, when they are abroad, when you're traveling, and what's going on, what is allowed. And we can also um, have the possibility um, to create a, a flexible landing page by our own. It wasn't the need to have the agency, uh, because, they are, as I said, uh, you, you don't have to um, have any programming skills. It is very easy to have uh, these Drupal um, templates and to create with uh, segments your own uh, landing page. And it was so easy and it looks so customized and it looks it look and feel like uh, Jägermeister and it was so easy to have access with mobile and the desktop version at home. And yes, yeah, it was fantastic. That's great. Yeah, so, so there another question is, do you sometimes get like technical questions from your technical staff that you need to ask or can't answer yourself just right away? You want to start? I go? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yes. The, sh the short answer is yes. And, and you have to, you know, there's, there's always two sides of the coming together. There's the brand side, there's the tech side to make things come to life. You have to lean into, their, into that side. You have to understand all the intricacies and the complexities and the impact that it has. Um, but of course, you have to always bring it back to what does the brand need? 
Uh, and it's hard, it's hard, right? Because sometimes you're like, I have no clue what's going on. But you need to learn, you need to adapt, and uh, thankfully, we have, it's a wide company, so we have a lot of experts in the room who can help bridge all those gaps. But the short answer, yeah, you have to. You have to know both sides. It's the same uh, as Jägermeister. We have these um, challenges. The look and feel, the marketing is coming and say, oh no, that looks so scary, mm, or fancy. And then we have the, the global uh, IT challenge with sec for security and data reasons with open source and all these things. But all in all, we come closely together and find ways. Good, good. Because so Milena, she's not, or he or she is not having a question, but the KitKat Italian website has a hidden button in the home page, apparently. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Ooh. It's either an Easter egg or a bug. I don't know. <laughs> it's something I will be writing to my Italian colleagues right after this. So, to, But this is the kind of thing, right? You have to give the flexibility. You have to give up a little bit of control. And um, actually, I know what that bug is, because we just removed a page. And yeah, there's some changes to be done. But this is the, this is the as you get into these large structures, it, it's also about, and coming back to your question on tech, uh, you know, do you need to understand the side of tech? You need to be able to have that good communication so everybody understands the impact of what they're doing. And it's not always the case, but um, it's a good comment. Thank you, <laughs> whoever it was. So there's a good question here. Um, do you sometimes get competition from other technologies within your company? That so. What I, how I understand the question is like, are there within your company people that are fighting to bring in other technologies that actually could impact that Drupal? You know, are they trying to fight for like, let's get this CMS system and that technology? Of course. Um, of course, I have, I'm in the good mood with our global IT, <laughs> just to let you know. But uh, when he started one year ago, um, he's a Microsoft fan. It's okay to work with it, everything is fine, but he has his own agenda and he say, Andrea, believe me, the best way to work is with all the platform, Microsoft, SharePoint, Microsoft Teams. And I said, oh my goodness, no, never. And it's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> um, it's a, um, it's a hard, sometimes it's a fight, sometimes it's a very big challenge because um, it's a traditional company and there are some hierarchies and when you say, oh, this is a, a big IT boss and there's a smart woman, we work on technique and uh, intranet and they underst she understands what she's doing, <laughs> then it's sometimes a fight um, to convince and to say how is the right way we work for it and what's the reason why we have decided for these tools. Yep. And this is the flexible, it is as flexible as the best way we work with it. And that's actually, like, I would like to hear it from you because um, you, we, talk, we heard it yesterday in the Dries note that um, Nikhil said it on stage uh, in the Q&A that there's like, he's getting all the time um, pitches from other, like, let's say Adobe or mm. Sitecore or saying like, here, go on our platform and he's being like, you know, that's being sent almost weekly. Are you experiencing the same from the market that other CMSs are out there trying to push their CMS on, on your brand, to your brand? So, I mean, we have a lot of, the beauty of the organization is we have experts in different fields, right? So, yeah, we all hear about these. We have a team that's really dedicated at vetting all these solutions for us. We do test and we do trial and we do experiment, whether it's at a local market level or at other levels. And, uh, you know, we're quite strict in what we need. So it's a mix of both, right? We don't stay stuck in one area or one solution. We do challenge the business requirements that sometimes, you know, we, we say, listen, we need X, Y, or Z. Who is the best provider to get this to us? Um, and then we open doors and we see if those doors lead anywhere. And sometimes they do, and that's great. Um, and sometimes they don't, and that's also part of, part of the world, right? But I think you need to be able to follow technology as it changes, or you need to be able to follow providers as they bring in new capabilities or others who stagnate. It's just part of the game, so. So we have a little bit of time for two, three more questions. Yep. Uh, I think uh, feel free to put in questions or upvote some so of the questions. There's many questions coming in, actually, so we have an export, so we can do more after. <laughs> um, I think that one that has been voted the highest now, and, um, and I think that 
it's to talk about how you contribute back to the community. Um, and I assume that we are talking about the Drupal community, how we contribute back to the Drupal community, asking here, yes. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot because I think it is your first DrupalCon, right? Yes, yes. 100%. 100%. So we, I think we should just make an applause that they are here today contributing their keynote to... <laughs> <laughs> So, but I actually, there's someone making a comment. We need more Drupal enthusiasts, as you are. Yeah, we need more ambassadors. Okay. <laughs> All right, this we can do. Yes. But on the contribution, I mean, there are. And I, I will point. We have someone in the room, or we have multiple people in the room from Nestle that could answer that question much better than me. So I'll let yeah. you find them later and and have those conversations. And that's actually one of the things that um, what was also a little bit of question about uh, KitKat platform. So Nestle is per se uh, having Drupal as their main technology for the CMS. And KitKat, so were you told by Nestle that you should use Drupal? And are you using the distribution that the Nestle is creating on a global scale? Or are you a little bit, do you know that? Yeah, I mean, I can talk from my experience. But again, I point to smarter people in the room. I've, I mean, I've been with Nestle a little bit too long. But I've, I've experienced when we were not with Drupal, and then when we, we went over onto Drupal and how we've been expanding that. There was a time when you had a lot of freedom, and you could really do whatever you wanted, but then we were losing this efficiency and scale that I kept on repeating. Um, and when we made this decision to go onto Drupal, this really helped simplify a lot, because not only do we get the learnings of our category, we can also get learnings from the other categories. So it's not to say it's a... Uh, it is the way we do it. It is like, you know, your first step, go in this direction. This is the solution. This is the way we do it. Um, but the beauty, again, within the, within the businesses, we have, if you build the business case, and this is really, really important, but those business cases really help us say, well, now I need something different. But the default today in 2023, 2023, <laughs> is yes, go with Drupal. Nice. Yep. So there is a, a question from Dan. And he's asking, what is the pineapple on pizza, or the pineapple on the pizza equivalent for KitKat, eating it sideways? I don't know what he means. Do you? Wait, wait, wait. say uh, it again. Pineapple how, sideways? Is there one way of like how to eat KitKat? Are you supposed to eat KitKat this way or on the side, or is something that is allowed? And okay, whoever has asked this, this is like such a contentious thing on TikTok. You have to go see. But um, you're supposed to do a ritual. You're supposed to tear. Snap, right? And there's a sort of a, a way you're supposed to eat Kit Kat. I'm a bit of a monster. Sometimes I just bite into it. You should never do this. Never ever do this. I know. Somebody <laughs> gasped. Never bite into your Kit Kat. But you know, if it's hot, it melts quickly, so you can just bite it. Well, what about you, Andrea? Any specific tips or tricks for the best Jägermeister experience? For me, it's easier to put it in the freezer and drink it ice cold. <laughs> and um, yeah, some tips, hints and tips, sometimes to be patient, patient, patient. And uh, yeah, to find a, a good partner to, to bring the experience um, to life. Um, yes, and that's it for me. It's so are, you allowed to, are you allowed to open it and put the thing on your oh, nose no. and then drink? That's a competitor, sorry. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay not this. <laughs> Um, maybe one important aspect is uh, the budgets. Um, you don't have. We are not asking you to talk about your budget, you know, per se. But how important do you think it is to like? Is do you continuously spend the same budget every year on the website, or is it a one-time budget and then a little bit of maintenance budget? How would you? How, what is your experience there? Um, we, we have uh, the same budget um, every year because it's important to um, develop um, because um, yeah the, um, the, the leadership management uh, have the approach to say um, we need a good working internal global communication. Yes, and if they want to have, they have to we have to uh, have the budget for it uh, to develop and uh, um, to put new features in it, to make it more easier, more agile, more fancy. Uh, this is what uh, Jägermeister stands for. And is it the same in KitKat? Actually, it's been a great, a great positive cycle, right? I think when we had our old Google Plus 2020 edition, the, the simple answer was no budget. You can't have any money. What's the point? 
Um, but as we've been able to show that we can build something that's relevant to the consumer, and not only that, actually be useful. So running our promos at scale, running connected pack, talking about you know, lower funnel e-commerce capabilities and these kinds of things, then the business leaders see value. And once they start to see value, they want more. They want more features, they want more customization, and then they provide us additional budget. And the way we operate at a global level is, is not, you know, it's money from them. They have to pool in their budgets and say, you know what, yes, we want to keep on improving the KitKat master. Actually, I want to now improve it for ice cream. I want to improve it for sustainability. And so that really creates positive momentum. So in two years, the budget has gone from almost non-existent to actually growing year on year because the value is getting there. And, and let's be honest, when you look at the competition, they're investing more and more as well. So it's a little bit of how do we stay even with our with our favorite competitors. Yes, of course. And when we see the engagement uh, rating or something like that, we analyze um, all these um, uh, figures and numbers, and then it's OK to have these budgets or maybe all to, to grow. So we have a lot of agency leaders here in the, in the audience. And I would like to, so what we often have as a challenge is um, that there is constant upgrades and updates and security updates of our software that we do not always are in control of. Um, well, is there any tip? Because I think that you heard about the upgrade from Drupal 8 to Drupal 9 and to Drupal 10. Um, is there any tips that you could give agency leaders here of uh, how they should, how they could sell that? Because what I hear often is, um, you know, don't come as a surprise and tell us, you know, like. What would you, do? You, should we just give you a fixed budget for the year and you sign that off? Or what's the best thing for us to do? The best thing is, because it's, it's a very technical uh, topic, but uh, in my opinion is, uh, I don't want any stress with our global IT. And so it's important, listen, for security reasons, it's important to have the latest update. And uh, yes, work together with the agency, global IT, and of course, um, our department, the global communication. Um, for us, it works. It's a, it's a good surrounding. Um, um, but at first of all, for our IT, is security the first thing and the important thing? So as an agency, we should just sell you a good package yeah. of saying, like, we are going to take care of yeah. it. Yeah. It's a good tip, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, w I would tend to echo that. I think, you know, we know that you need to upgrade all the time. Whether it's our phones, whether it's Drupal, it doesn't matter. This is the way it is. Um, of course, none of us want to be called by IT telling us that we've been doing something that we shouldn't. But on the other hand, for, the, for my agency, uh, for sure, it's, let's get in a, a yearly maintenance contract. We separate it out, right? There's the, there's the features and the development. But it's very important to have that maintenance stream and to take those, you know, just to make sure that we're never caught can I say it caught with our pants down, right? You just never want to be in the situation where you're, you're like, I didn't budget for this, I need to pull it out of something else. So we really try and make sure we have sufficient budget every year. And if not, you know, then, then we, if we have any left over, then to roll it into something else. So, so when, when you have like a global operation with all the, the different brands and all the different country websites, there's people that will have come to you and say, hey, I need this or I want this on the website. That initially they would, like do on their own in WordPress or whatever. Yep. So how do you channel those ideas? How do you have a way in for people to say, okay, if you have something, here's the backlog, or come to me, or how do you do that? Yeah, it's a, it's a great one. So it was on one of the slides, right? We were able to break those silos. And, and what that meant was before, what would have happened was just like one random person saying, I need this, develop it, pay for it, and have no ability to give it to anyone else. What we've created now is a forum, right, where we have our key markets share what do they need, what would they like. And it's not, it's not a democracy, of course, great, great. but it is, it is these lead markets saying, hey, we need this, you didn't think of it. And if there's enough scale in it, we fund it above market, which is great for them. It's not that it's free, but they don't see the pain. If it's something hyper-local, then, of course, we'd say you can, but you fund it, you develop right. it. Right. Yeah, That's good. It's the same, as you said, um, you have the different markets. In my uh, case, is that I have the different departments. They have their wishes and their needs. 
and um, they come to us and say, oh, it would be great if we have uh, this function or that function, maybe an overview about all departments or chat functions and all these things. And then also we talk to, the, uh, to our agency and say, um, how can we develop? And then send, uh, I go back to the department and say, it, it could be, can be, we can um, develop it if you fund it. I think it is a, a great uh, question. Do we have any burning question in the end that we want to well, ask? There's really quite a lot. We have so to go through them all after. Yeah. We don't have time yeah. for all of them. But we'd like to thank you. If you want to come and ask the questions live, then feel free to. I think they're going to be sitting here or standing here maybe for a couple of more minutes. So thank you for tonight or for the day. Uh, we have something on the slide that we wanted to show. Uh, how is it in the back yeah. room, uh, sir? Right. That's the Little Roosters auction. So we are already up to 180 euros. We can do better than this, right? So give Little Rooster its new home and bid there. So, so currently, this is the highest bid, and that bid would be going to Girls Who Code. So please go on your app uh, in the Little Rooster auction and uh, give some uh, bid for a good cause, and then you can get him with your home or, or leave him here with some good people. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, you Andrea, Andrea Os here. Thank you, Arush Kukar. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>